teenager, I used to terrorise my neighbourhood with a game I invented called Theft and Shrubbery. <laughs> what were the rules of theft and shrubbery? <sighs> Can I first of all say my memories of this are a bit sketchy? <laughs> Always handy for this game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm an, an older gentleman. They're more like just, you know, just fingerprints on an abandoned handrail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's very distant. Even while you poetically describe the ageing process, yeah. another part of your brain is inventing the rules of a fiction. <laughs> It's and Shrubbery. Yeah. It's a game that I played in my youth, in my teens, in, um, on the Lakes Estate in Middlesbrough. I would probably be 14 or 15. Um, I hope that's all the information you need. Do you have any recollection? That'll do. As to what this game involved. Yes, of course. Of course. In which case, I'm satisfied and there's no need to tell <laughs> What were the rules? Um, there would have to be a gang of you. I would usually be with um, Stava and Bagger. Um, <laughs> well, I didn't realise you knew hobbits. As <laughs> Neil Overall, a, a Jerry Dungaree's son. Of course he <laughs> didn't take his father's name. <laughs> Him. So, and, but, and, and Gary Cheeseman would be there. So the reason he was called Cheesy is because his mum used to give him a cheese, you know, the cheese slice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. To take out with him yeah. when we were hanging around the shops what? and that, because she wanted, because she thought it was good for his spots. <laughs> and she wanted him to call some slice. Surely it's because of his surname Cheeseman. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Cheesy. Surely that was part of it. <laughs> well, Gary Cheeseman was a big lad. Yeah, a very big head. Sniper's dream, they used to call it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such a nice... The thing is, he's such a nice lad. And he was a... He was a... I love these points in the show where we say, Bob, let, let's all gather around the fireside. <laughs> you can tell us tales of your youth. <laughs> so no, so, so the rules of the game. Theft of course and, you theft The rules shrubbery. of the game. Okay. Theft and... Shrubbery. Shrubbery. <laughs> but relatively simple. You had to creep into the back of someone's house and observe the family watching the telly or whatever they're doing, yeah? It's getting a bit sinister now, Bob. Yeah, I know. <laughs> is, this, is, is this at night? This is on the evening time, yeah. So, so the, the, the family, as it were, backlit by the yes, domestic lighting. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and then you'd find one where the curtains were open, yeah? go to the rear of the garden and then you'd slowly walk towards the window. <laughs> right? Try not to disturb them. And you'd chant, increasingly, increasing the, vo the uh, volume as you went, we do beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> but we are in your garden. <laughs> and then you gradually get closer and closer to the window. And as soon as you were seen, that's when shrubbery comes in. Which was what? You were not allowed to escape via the front of the property. You had to go across all the fences. Because you're teenagers, what you're really waiting for is someone to make a noise or give yourself away yeah. so that you all have to go run, run through all the gardens. That's the shrubbery That's part. That's the shrubbery part. What's the theft part? The, the theft is, is... We just always felt that we were stealing something from them. Their it, privacy. I don't know, their privacy, their dignity. <laughs> So you, you're going up the garden saying louder and louder, we do beg your pardon, <laughs> we are in your garden. <laughs> we do beg your pardon, we are we're in your garden. garden. You're shouting. How, how loud are how loud the elderly you people who are hard of hearing? <laughs> we do beg your pardon, we are in your garden! Before they notice it. Yeah. <laughs> this game can't have lasted. I'm imagining very long before people kind of rumbled you and... No, it was just one of the games, you know, you, you, that we did. It could be um, theft and shrubbery night. There was another night where we used to take fruit from um, a fruit vendor's wagon and throw that up in the air and just let it drop on our heads. Something tells me you play that quite a lot, Bob. Next time, next time don't use melons. <laughs> Cheeseman was very good at it. <laughs> So what do you think, David? Steve, what my, do you my, think? my concern is that the details are so utterly believable and sound like they're real that if it wasn't actually a game, he spent an awful lot of time looking through people's windows. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming down on the on the side of truth. 
Yeah, I know it sounds odd, but I just believe it. <laughs> you say true? Yeah. OK, so, theft and shrubbery, Bob, truth or lie? I was telling the truth. <laughs> On a dark winter's night, I once broke into the garden of the local witch's house and was shocked by what I found there. <laughs> <laughs> David Steve. OK, uh, uh, how... Uh, uh, what point... There's a lot of questions, <laughs> isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> At what point in your life did this happen? I'm going to guess somewhere between when I was 11 and 13. 12. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I'm going to say 12. And you say the local witch's house. What do you mean by that? Um, I mean, this is a, a very distant memory now. <laughs> OK. It was the house not very far from me where everyone, all the kids, said that the witch lived. And who did it, live there? Um, I don't know their name. Right. I'll call them Mary Candles. <laughs> It had, it had hedges at the front, you know, yeah. it's like uncut hedges, a front, uh, a, a front gate covered with hedging. And it said on the, on the front gate, it said simply the words, no thanks. No, oh. really? So that's quite creepy, isn't it? Can I ask a question? Yeah. You're, you started that with saying you were shocked by what you saw there. Yeah. Yes. What what I, you... Yes, <laughs> shocked by what I found there. What, what did you find there? I'm not comfortable with telling you that just yet. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not. This is going not... so far, it's got to be a lie, hasn't it? Let me just say, it does not have to be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever he says, however absurd, <laughs> it could still be true. <laughs> however <laughs> plausible, it could still be a lie. <laughs> it's just, uh, essentially, what we are doing for this section is entirely futile. <laughs> <laughs> We will talk for a bit, then we will guess, then we'll and guess. then it will be over. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you come to, to go into this house? Who were you with? I was with, um, oh, what's he called? <laughs> I was with Ken, Ken Numbers. <laughs> Ken Ken Numbers. Numbers. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Ronnie Calculator's son. The vibe is it's very unkempt, it's the gardening, because as we all know, Lee, yeah, witches hate gardening, yeah. <laughs> wizards hate plumbing. Right. Yeah. So we knew it was a female residence. Right. right. Um, so you've like... never seen Mary Candles, <laughs> so you're only speculating it must be a witch rather than a wizard because it was an unkempt garden, unkempt garden. with no sign of deficient plumbing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and, you know, we wanted to be the first people who said, no, we penetrated, you know, its boundaries. Yeah. We, we went... Um, into the front lawn, down a, a, a gate to the side, past the bins, past the back door, yeah? Yeah. and then to the window where um, there was a light on, a big picture window, looked inside, and that's when we saw this extraordinary sight. Well, extraordinary to us as 12 what was it? What was it? You've got to say. <laughs> it was <laughs> a tiny, <laughs> tiny horse. <laughs> And the tele I'm not saying it was watching television, that was all that was in the room. It was a tiny horse and a television on. <laughs> <laughs> I did get in the house. You got in the house? Yes, Mrs Candles came out. Right. Hey. Yes, and she said to me, you're one of the Mortimer boys, aren't you? <laughs> Were you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Ken said... <laughs> and, um, and she said, would you like to come in and see the horse? <gasps> and she took us in, and it stank of paraffin. It was hot. That's horse. Hot, hot paraffin. No, that was on the house. The oh, I think the horse stunk of paraffin. The horse did stink, actually. Did he? Yeah. Of meat, hot meat. <laughs> <laughs> As we were looking at the horse, I always remember this. She came in, and she had a toilet seat in her hand, <laughs> and she said, "If I give you some money, do you think you could get rid of this for me?" <laughs> <laughs> What did you do with it? Mm -hmm. Just threw it in on our way home, just threw it somewhere else, I, I, I imagine. <laughs> did she say what the horse's name was? Max. Max. <laughs> yes. yeah. You'd have thought minimum. <laughs> 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 All right, well, now, Suggs, what, what are you thinking about this? Oh. I mean, you know, it, it's so preposterous, but... David's flung me by saying this is the way he carries on anyway. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, but no, I'm saying lie, of course. You say it's a lie. lie. 
but it was when you said <laughs> the horse smelt like hot meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you remember the detail of the paraffin heaters? Yes. Oh, oh yes. yes. We're talking 40, maybe 50 degrees there with those old... Um... 40 or 50 degrees <laughs> centigrade. So we're talking like the temperature of the desert in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see Mary Candles again? No, never. Never mm. saw her again? Never saw her again. She probably melted in that heat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what are you going to say then, David? Uh, do we think lie? I think it's a lie. I think it's a lie. lie. I think it is a lie. All right, they're it's saying yeah. it's a lie. Now, we should bear in mind that when it comes to Bob, David has a very poor track record. <laughs> <laughs> Let's yeah. see if he can be better tonight. Yeah. Bob, truth or lie? I was telling the truth. No! <laughs> True. Bob really did break into a creepy garden. A daring heist on a campsite tuck shop. <laughs> <laughs> David's team. OK. Uh, where was the campsite? Hexham. <laughs> <laughs> what did you steal? What did you take? Ca Jay, my memories of this <laughs> are quite vague. I was only 15. OK. 15. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I still remember what you took. Yes, though, but I'm it's before. like picking bits of... Pollen off a mouse's handkerchief. <laughs> <laughs> so don't get all forensic on me. Okay. <laughs> don't, don't, so, don't ask him any questions. Yeah, so, all right. <laughs> just make your decision and move on. <laughs> we, just, we were invited just, to just believe him. Just tell us what you do remember, Bob. Not, not in general about this story. I remember. <laughs> oh, I remember the MG. <laughs> she was lovely. And the teeth fell out. You remember that, don't you? The teeth fell out. There was uh, a lot of wind. Remember waking up in threshers? <laughs> don't you remember that? So, it was Hexham. It was yeah. Hexham. <laughs> um, and what uh, sort of a campsite? Was it tents or caravans? It was, no, dormitories, wooden. Yeah. It's coming back, wow. Yeah. It's amazing <laughs> when you... And, um, it was for gifted children for the summer. <laughs> is, is that what they told you, Bob? <laughs> yes. People there, um, interesting people with different gifts. gifts. What was your gift? And they were allowed to bring a friend. There was. There, 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 there. <laughs> <laughs> so there was people who were good at pottery, people good at art, yeah. people who were gifted at fencing. Or um... we're all very curious to know, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> what were you good at? I was there because of my special abilities at football. <laughs> and the camp wasn't just for children who were good at football, it was for children who were good it at was a for wide gift, range of things. Gifted children. Right. right. So you were proposed yeah. by the school or the local authority. <laughs> 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 it was huts in a pine forest, a place where you could canoe, a place where you could pot. Uh, yeah. yeah. All boys. All boys in my dorm. Mm. Yeah. Do you remember any of them? I was with um, Pork Chops Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> he was called that because he has a very thick layer of fat across his back. <laughs> Pork Chops Johnson. Because this is a criminal enterprise, I'm not using their real name. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> was it Lamb Chop <laughs> Jenkins? <laughs> Is he just had a thin bone. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, and there was the mole. The mole. The mole. They're the two. They're the two people that I carried out the um, heist with. Why did you decide to do this heist? Well, it was the evening. Yeah. And the nights had got, gotten quite long. <laughs> <laughs> it was a summer. Camp. Winter was drawing in. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, the gifted children hadn't been picked up. <laughs> to fend for themselves <laughs> to see if among their gifts are foraging and surviving the cold. Well, never a better equipped group of people to be abandoned. We, we had archers, potters, <laughs> and... <laughs> but it, I mean, <laughs> footballers, those are the key things you need. We can sort out the archer in the football, <laughs> then we have a civilization. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was evening, yep. and there was a tuck shop there. Well, it was one of the huts. What we noticed, right, was that the tuck shop was on a slope, right? 
So there's an angle created, yeah? It's at an angle, I'm not very good at it. Say if a duck went quack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, but not, that, not at the angle if it went fox! <laughs> We had this, so it had a bot, like a, a, an end that was raised, yeah. and they'd filled that in with stones and <laughs> soil. Yeah. So we went down there. Yeah. Oh, what happened? Well, first off, of course, yeah. the mole removed the stones. <laughs> <laughs> and then Paul Chop Johnson, yeah. Yeah. he slid in and with that magnificent back. <laughs> the last person to be sliding for home. <laughs> the man with the biggest back. Above him is floorboards. Bang! Oh, you mean he used his back to get the floorboards up? Yeah, got one up. Then is that when small head Bob went through? <laughs> <laughs> so he gets in. He gets in. We heard an engine start up, so I gave I gave out the cry, a warning. Whiffle. What? Whiffle. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, go, go, go. Right. We went. Yeah, so you heard somebody. So did you get anything? Yes. yes. What, yeah. did what did what you did get? get? A box of cereal. <laughs> One packet of cereal. What did you do with it after? Well, we ate it in the dorm with, with, with everyone in the dorm. Oh, with everybody in the dorm. Yeah. Did you eat, okay. eat it dry? Yes. Well, well, we put a bit of urine on it, definitely. <laughs> 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 but, <laughs> but, yes. What do you think, David? <laughs> My instinct is it's not true, mm. but it could be true. Yeah. I mean, it's Bob. <laughs> I, I don't think it happened. So you think lie. it's a lie? I'm going to go with Sue. I like the story, but I think it's a lie. I think we're going to go lie. You're going to say lie? I'm br you know, I'm braced. <laughs> I'm braced for an odd experience. No. <laughs> so, Bob, was it the truth or was it a lie? I was telling the truth. <laughs> It's uh, Bob. Sorry? It's you. <laughs> <laughs> it's apple pie tonight. <laughs> Is it? It's his Friday then. Yes. <laughs> Following advice from Chris Rea, I always crack an egg into my bath. <laughs> I've done for 22 years. <laughs> We should say for any of the, the younger viewers, some of my fans, who, who Chris Rea... <laughs> Chris Rea was a very popular singer. When did Chris Rea give you this advice and in what, what context? Um, I was making a single for Middlesbrough Football Club's um, FA Cup appearance uh, called Let's, Let's Dance, which I did with Chris Rea. Mm. And after we'd completed the, the recording, he popped me into the bath and there was an egg... <laughs> He, he popped you into the bath. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day, you must be very tired. Yeah. <laughs> he said, let's just... I'll just pop you into the bath. Yeah. <laughs> so wh where was this bath? Was it at it, the recording studio? It's on a little island in the middle of the Thames. It's this Rose recording um, yeah. studio. Is. So you've been recording, presumably, in, in a room without a bath. Uh, absolutely, yeah. And then you finish the recording, everyone's very happy with the track. Yep. And he says, Bob, you look tired. <laughs> Maybe your joints are aching this way. No, it's not exactly like that. He says, I like that's it, Bob. I think we've got that leg. <laughs> that's your bedroom, that's your bath. I've put the leg in there for you. <laughs> <laughs> Is he Geordie? Yeah. He's well, like where I'm from, Middlesbrough. Right. But he's much more Middlesbrough than me, like. <laughs> and why would he put an egg in your bath? Yes. What was the thinking behind it? Um, I've never found out. <laughs> You've done it ever since. All, all, I know, all I know is that I woke up the next morning and I have never felt so alive. <laughs> was the egg still in its shell, floating, or had he gone... No, the white had dis dissipated. Does that work? <laughs> yeah. It's fabulous, it's fabulous. It's non-greasy, which is a, is a, is a bone, isn't it? Is it, is it non-greasy? Yeah, yeah, honestly. It's less greasy Absolutely. than water without egg in it? <laughs> <laughs> do you have to mix it up, or do you just crack it and let it flow? Do you know what? You get in the bath, even in the bath where I am now, and you get in and you, don't, you really don't want to burst the yolk. So the white goes, but the yolk's there. 
<laughs> and you move like that. And you try and get it to come <laughs> towards <laughs> like that. And I don't know why, but you just do. Have you ever had a get in your mouth? You get it uh, like that. And then you get the yolk, and I, don't, and I use it for, for hair condition. Yeah. <laughs> I know I've not got much hair, but to condition the hair on my skin. So, just to, going back to the original occasion, uh, Chris Rea had already run you a bath. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, mean, I forgot about that detail. <laughs> You knew Chris, it's just so Chris. <laughs> yeah. Do you know, the other thing it was, is a couple of weeks later, he sent me a gold doily. <laughs> right. <laughs> to dry yourself <laughs> off. <laughs> I don't know. Well, so, I'm just saying, these things are just so Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Do we think that the way Bob describes what happened to the egg white... Is that... He says it just dissipates. Is that plausible? If your plausible? bath is hot, then you're going to have a poached white. I'd have thought the mm. white would, yeah, would turn white. And well, no, be no, bits no, no, as white. How, how hot no, is no. your bath? <laughs> 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 your bath is hot enough that an egg could poach Well, I don't know. <laughs> you, your claim is that it dissipates. I'm asking my team whether oh, we right. believe that it would dissipate. Because if, for example, at the temperature of bath, say, 39 degrees Celsius, the white would turn opaque, then your story doesn't check out. Agreed. Yeah, Absolutely agreed. I think... <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, David? I, I think it's fair to say that if anyone else had made this allegation about Chris Aria and an egg in their bath, we wouldn't be giving it a moment's consideration. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, coming from Bob, <laughs> it might be true. <laughs> it's true. I, I, I think... You think it's... I think it's true, cos he's, he's, he's been about oh, a bit, Bob. no. <laughs> <laughs> I think the white would poach. Yeah, the... Yeah, I think the egg is the The chemical part. analysis of the behaviour of the albumen. <laughs> <laughs> David, honestly, one thing, please don't base it on the albumen whitening. It does not happen. <laughs> It does not. I can't have a bath at 80 plus degrees. <laughs> third, is that it? the temperature at which an egg white will 80 to, It'll start at about 80, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, don't, please don't base it on that. <laughs> what should I base it on, Bob? <laughs> what are you going to say? Instinctively, I believe it. Uh, we're going to go true. You're saying Ooh. true? OK, so Bob, Chris Rea, <laughs> eggs... <laughs> Is it the truth or is it a lie? This is awful. <laughs> I was telling a lie. <laughs> of course! Of course it's a lie! He said, he said Chris Rea put egg in his bar. <laughs> Obviously a lie. Who could possibly believe that? <laughs> It'd be more likely that someone was stuck in a car wash for three hours. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Bob doesn't crack an egg into his bath following advice from Chris Rea. The police once ordered me to leave town, unspecified, because I was frightening the locals. <laughs> David's team, what do you think? Could you give us some context, Bob? Um, shall I'll give you the name of the town. It was Castle Douglas. Ah, where is that? It's southwest Scotland. And why were you in Castle Douglas? Um, was it a what... tour or something? No, it was a long time ago. I was only um, 17, 18, mm. that kind of age. And yeah. uh... <laughs> a numerical age, that kind. <laughs> yeah. Ra rather than iron or bronze. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> That's a different kind of... <laughs> um, I was trying... I was with two friends trying to get as close to the Gulf Stream as I possibly could. What? What do you mean you wanted to get close to the Gulf Stream? It seems such an I mean... appealing, far-off, mi miraculous thing, this you, you know, hot you... stream of water so near us that it was hard to believe in it just from the textbooks. But it's not like a spa. It's, no, it's a massive <laughs> flow within the ocean. Yeah, but you, could, you can't see it. Well, if you're at the Logan Botanical Gardens... Well, there's grow... a lovely view of the no, Gulf Stream. No, no, but you can see the effect. 
depths of the Gulf Stream. You know, it's like a tropical gardens, and so you, in that way you sense the influence of the Gulf Stream. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, it's well, extraordinary. I know, look, I know all teenagers are absolutely mad on the Gulf Stream. <laughs> <laughs> can't get enough of it and it's And effect. flowers. But, um, the, but that was one reason amongst uh, many. But the p police of Castle Douglas don't mind the teenagers who will flock there <laughs> to admire the effect of the Gulf Stream. So what was it that you did that, that put their noses out of joint? We scared the locals, apparently, yeah. because we were wearing very grotesque masks. Why were you wearing masks? Uh, if you're going to a gardens, why would you wear a mask? Oh, well, here's the thing. That's a, that is, yeah. that's a perfect question. Yeah. The, um, have a, just before I answer it, have a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were, we were travelling in a Morris Minor, and yeah. we were sleeping in the car, there was three of us. That's me, me mate Harry Harriman and Steve... <laughs> Steve, 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 <laughs> Steve, by the way. He was... Uh, uh, <laughs> what do you just call Steve, Steve, by the way? He was. Steve, Steve, by the way. Was. Steve, by the way, as in incidentally. Yes. <laughs> anyway, so, we, we had these... You're wearing these masks. We're wearing these grotesque... Why are we wearing these masks? We're wearing these masks because we, were, we didn't have anywhere to sleep and we were sleeping in the car. Right. They'd been given us to, by Harry Harriman's mum, yeah? To keep us warm at night because <laughs> of the heat generator. <laughs> what latex, grotesque latex masks? Yes, <laughs> they were just old men's masks, but they were to keep us warm. <laughs> Harry Harriman's mum had, uh, had a she she, she sold, sold these stuff from home, and she sold another thing which was called a jobble top, yeah, which was a bobble hat that went it made it into a jumper, and the big bobble was at the back and it buttoned down the front. <laughs> And that it, was... I'm telling you now, right, if this is a lie, yeah. and they end up saying lie, I will say to you, why did you make it more difficult for yourself? <laughs> <laughs> By mentioning the joggle top, or whatever it was called. Because I'm imagining my sleeping arrangements and think, yes, we had the latex masks on, yeah. and these giant, like, what they're called, jobble tops. Right, OK, they, like, uh, OK, OK, OK. So, okay. so if you're wearing a sleeping mask and you're scaring the locals, like, no, normally the locals would be in bed when you're going to sleep no, and it's no. dark and you're in your car and you've got a scary mask on it, you know. No, we were just... Uh, on our drive, daytime drive from Dundee to Castle Douglas... With masks as on. We, as we went past Keep people, your faces warm. we were staring at them with our scary masks Why on. did you not remove... Because oh, I would say, from my experience of sleeping all night in a classic <laughs> car in a Matex mask and a jobble top, that you get quite clammy. Yes. <laughs> and so in many yes. ways it's quite a relief to take the latex mask yeah. off for the next day's drive. Yes, and Dave, not, we... not to mention how it helps being able to see where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> but then, no, of course, we take the mask off in the morning, but then round about midday, you wanted to put it back on. Yeah. At what point did the police get involved? That's, isn't, didn't the police get we involved? We parked yeah. up in, in um, Castle Douglas, right next to a shop, because we wanted to get one of the firm scotch pies. <laughs> As we came out of the shop, I was grabbed by a policeman, and it was a sergeant by the way. Sergeant, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you got away with it, you said, don't worry, that's me, Dad. <laughs> Maybe it was. I'm a sergeant, by the way. <laughs> I think, Daddy! <laughs> <laughs> so the sergeant... By the way. By the way, yeah. he took me to the police station and they so put, he arrested you? Yes, taken and put in a room, and then the, uh, the sergeant and a, and a plainclothes detective came in. Plainclothes plain detective? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is she doing? See, see, I did have no very <laughs> <laughs> And then they said, you're going to have to wait here, we've sent for a specialist from Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, as we sat there, it came in and said, right, What's with the funny faces, they said. What's with the funny faces? <laughs> so what did you say? Well, we explained what had happened, that we had these funny faces, that we slept in them, and that we're terribly sorry to have caused any offence. So presumably then they, they released you? Sergeant, by the way, <laughs> followed us till we were out of the city limits. So that's my story. It's quite a holiday. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? I know what I think. What do you I think? think? I, th I think it's true. You think it's true? Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> not what I think. Kian, <laughs> uh, what do you think? I'm going to go untrue. OK, Kian's Ke going untrue. Adil's going true. David? My initial reaction is that it's a lie. Let's say it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie? Yeah. <clears throat> Bob Mortimer. <laughs> yes? Was that story true? Or was it a lie? It was true. <laughs> no! <laughs> 
Yes, it was true. The police did order Bob to leave town because he was frightening the locals. Oh. Oh, God. Uh, I've put a toaster on my bedside table, and the last thing I do at night is pop two slices of bread in it, ready for the morning. <laughs> right, so you put the bread in the toaster, <laughs> but you don't put the toast down. No. no. That would be crazy. So in the Unless you're using it as an alarm clock for a three-minute <laughs> nap. So in, <laughs> in the morning, do you wake naturally or do you have an alarm? I have an alarm. Yeah. Well, I tend to uh, wake up before the alarm goes right. off. It's one of the reasons I do it, because at the heart of it is to not wake other people up in the house. Oh, oh right, OK. What, what do you put on your toast in the morning? Have you got, like, a little... some butter? In or? the little... Cupboard there. I've got honey. I've got marmite pots. I've got. So, I've got a good selection. So in the morning, you wake up before the alarm. What yeah. do you do then? I turn on my teas mate. <laughs> right. There we go. <laughs> well, that... I don't yes. think everyone knows what teas mate is. It's no. like a. It's it's where alarm clock meets <laughs> kettle. <laughs> it's a combination, and you set them the night before, and you wake up, and the kettle's boiling. Is a tea's made in the toaster on the same bedside table? No, it, as it's the alarm clock. No, the tea's made is just tucked round the other side. So you wake up, you reach round the bedside table onto the tea's made that's on on the floor. Is yes, it? and it's just the. Why are you not just going downstairs to uh, do this? Because all my children, and there are a lot of them, um, <laughs> sleep downstairs. <laughs> Their own call bucket. <laughs> Why do they sleep downstairs? <laughs> because that's where their bedrooms are. I don't, I'm not being facetious. There's only space for you to yeah. sleep at, upstairs, but downstairs there's a great breadth. Great breadth for all these children. Yeah. <laughs> now, what about eating the toast? We haven't put the toast down yet. <laughs> He's turned the switch on the tea's made. By reaching round rather uncomfortably, but, but so, you, but so he doesn't acting. have to get out that's of bed. Acting. You go, mm, yeah, no, yeah, okay, it's so there. You do, okay, done that. Yeah. What do you do then? I sit on the bed. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. And cry. <laughs> Let's see, thinking here we go, because it's five o'clock, whatever. Five o'clock in the morning. He doesn't want to wake the kids up. They're up in half an hour to clean the chimneys. <laughs> Make noise, you've chose the noisiest breakfast to eat as well, yeah. munching on a bit of toast. No, my wife's okay, it's just all these children. That you, just can't, <laughs> you, you just can't. As soon as you, if you were to go downstairs, <laughs> yes. as soon as you set foot on the on the lower floor, the hundreds of children would wake up and you'd never get <laughs> you'd never get to the kitchen through that because they'll be thronging well, all David, of them hungry. David raises an interesting point. How many? You said a lot of children. How many are down there? I'm not willing to say. <laughs> Did you give us a ballpark? Nope. When do your so, children wake? One o'clock, two o'clock. So so the you're the ones. You're, you're, you've woken up at five AM, so you You've got to kill sort of <laughs> This is why it's about eight hours. <laughs> what did you do? So, so you see looking at that toast for eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> you can't make it last. Just nibbling at that. Sometimes, sometimes I don't even eat it, Suggs. <laughs> I don't even bother. Just sucks it so he doesn't wake his wife up. <laughs> oh, Harry, yeah. <laughs> You've got to one Don't PM. worry. <laughs> <laughs> See, they're on the edge of the bed. Like, yeah, it's a bleak image in her bottom. What now. time does the missus get up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she gets up. She's sitting there with you going. <laughs> <laughs> It's a freaking <laughs> prison, isn't it, really? <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> it's awful! This is true, I, I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> I don't think if your kids don't wake up till one, what are you having for lunch? <laughs> Where's all the lunch stuff? <laughs> In the wardrobe. <laughs> Stove and a tin of beans. <laughs> I take the paddle off the side of the bag. <laughs> <laughs> a little can of gas. Some spam. <laughs> oh. Maybe make a corned beef hash in the front. <laughs> right, what are you going to say? I, I'm leaning towards 
that this is the truth. You see, <laughs> you see the madness. This is how the madness oh, takes it. This is what it does. This is what it does. It plays with your mind. <laughs> and even if we're wrong, all we know is tomorrow we can wake up and go down to our kitchens, whereas he's got to wake up. We win a life. You see. No, that's not true. Because if we say it's true and we're wrong, mm. yes, tomorrow we can go down to our kitchen yeah. to have a normal breakfast. Yeah. But so it turns out, can he? <laughs> he'll, be going, he'll be skipping down the stairs laughing while his children, who have to get up two hours earlier than him, serve him breakfast. And he goes, you'll never believe what they believe, oh, uh, those fools on the television. <laughs> More bacon china. <laughs> We, we, we have two things to choose between. Yeah. Let's assume <laughs> we'll be wrong, yeah. whatever we say. So yeah. which would we prefer, to say it's true and we're wrong, or to say it's a lie and we're wrong? That's the choice. <laughs> I think saying it's a lie and we're wrong is easier to live with <laughs> than saying it's true and we're wrong. I think it's true. But you oh, think it's God. true? Yeah, I do. So, so shall we go with true? Oh, go on then, Dave. Oh, OK, oh, we're going to go God. with true, and this is... The future is... Please be telling the truth. Yeah. OK, OK, we'll say They're true. Saying, uh, it's, it's true. Bob, was it true? <laughs> yeah, or was it hey. a lie? Oh, God. I was telling a lie. <laughs> Yes, it's a lie. Bob doesn't keep a toaster by his bed. Oh, my God, Bob, you're oh. That noise signals oh, is time end? is up. So soon. <laughs> I once helped Damon Hill to Grand Prix success by presenting him with a pre-race snack. David's team. <laughs> well, it certainly tripped off the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, what was the snack? A scotch egg. <laughs> and is there a definite correlation between him eating that scotch egg and him being successful? He um, felt that the scotch egg had uh, helped him succeed in the race. He told me so. <laughs> is Damon Hill a close friend, Bob? No, no. <laughs> then why were you giving him food stuff? <laughs> well, I'd been invited to the Grand Prix. Which Grand Prix? The British. In, in, in which year? Think. <laughs> 1996, David, but I'm not willing to exclude four years either side of that. <laughs> Put it this way, it was definitely one of the decades. <laughs> Do you like racing, then? No, I'm not a, a Formula One fan. Right. I probably uh, prefer soil science. OK. <laughs> Driving for? He was driving for one uh, a company um, <laughs> that had right. very fast company cars. <laughs> <laughs> so, why were you permitted access to a major racing driver? Because his manager, yeah, yeah Shane Tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't remember his you name. Can't remember his name. Shane, uh, or whoever it was, was also with another bloke, you know, benefiting from hospitality. What was his name? Let's say Top Heavy Ken. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember we went upstairs on the bus, Damon was there, he had a bed in there. Like a sort of Winnebago. Yeah. And it had, you know, mugs with I love cars, I love... <laughs> Hand breaks, I love headrests. And this is the day of the race. David, this is just like an hour and a half before the an race. An hour and a half before the race. You've turned up an hour and a half early, because even though you're more into soil science, you want to soak up the atmosphere <laughs> with a good hour and a half of yeah. waiting before the televised traffic begins. Yes. <laughs> so you turn up, the last thing Damon needs before a race is any quiet time. He just wants a bit of hubbub <laughs> on his bus. Were there any other people there apart from you and Shane and Damon? I was with my wife as well, yeah. Okay. Mm. And um... top heavy can. <laughs> 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 so me and the wife went up. I think when you go to someone's home or their Winnebago or whatever, you should. Do you know, like if you're going to a dinner party at someone's house, you'll always take them a bottle of vinegar. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So your gift to thank him for the hospitality was a scotch egg. No, oh. I call it pocket meat. Whenever I'm out away, from, whenever I'm away from my house, I have pocket meat. Yeah. That's it. I have like a chicken leg or pork pie. <laughs> and I thought I've got some pocket meat. It was a scotch egg in its cellophane. And I said, Damon, we all know that um, if you pop a sausage roll in an American's pocket, it brings him good luck. So maybe a Scotch egg would work for a British fella like you. Is, and I gave it to him. Is that a thing? Yeah, very what, much. What, that if you put meat in, a, in an American's pocket? Processed meat. Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> not, not really, no. No. It's all been a bit of a lot of talking. <laughs> 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 I've quite forgotten the original bit of the story. Did he eat said Scotch uh, egg before uh, the race? I, I'll Did never you? know, Samantha, but after the race... He said that he took the scotch egg round with him. He swore he did. In the I, car! I don't know whether he put it in the glove box on the passenger seat. <laughs> <laughs> or whether, whether he ate it. But, Bob, you're not claiming that he ate the egg. All I say is, is that when I was watching, when, when Damon went past, in his tailwind, a person next to me said, Damon's tailwind smelt really meggy. Which, of, co <laughs> which of course, is meat and egg. Meat and egg. Okay. So, well, what are we thinking, Sam? Do you know what? Sometimes stories are so mad that they've got to be true. What I would say here is be wary when it comes to Bob. Oh, OK. <laughs> Do you remember, David, that I think it was the last time Bob was with us, he told us Chris Rea told him he yeah. put an egg into his bath. I can't even remember. Was mm. that true? No. But you believed it was true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, what are you thinking? Well, I'm... I think that you're sort of somewhat cynically using this as an opportunity to tout your kind of charms <laughs> and you're hoping to kind of drum up work and then your agent's going to get lots of phone calls saying oh would bob mortimer be able to sort of slip gareth bale a pasty and stuff like <laughs> this <laughs> i think it's a lie you think it's a lie but you think it's true i'm on the fence oh dear this is a horrible situation i don't know my instinct is it's a lie you're saying lie okay yeah. bob mortimer uh, a lucky scotch egg for damon hill at the british Grand prix <laughs> truth or lie. <laughs> I was telling the truth. <laughs> He's done it again. <laughs> it is an impossible situation. <laughs> One egg thing's true, the other egg thing. How can I have disbelieved <laughs> the wrong egg thing? <laughs> so, so obviously what they'd make up some random thing about an egg and a long departed <laughs> 90s celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Is he dead? He's not, no, he's not dead. He's just, you never hear from him. What does Damon Hill do now? He's probably into soil science. <laughs> <laughs> right. For the past 15 years, I have performed my own dentistry. <laughs> David's team. So, yeah. <laughs> give us a big grin. It could be true. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm that you're implying I'm a bad dentist. No, because even very, very, very good dentists sometimes get someone else to do their teeth. <laughs> uh, right. I, and by sometimes, <laughs> I of course mean <laughs> always. How do you do that? Like, do you? What do you do? Yeah. Well, no. The the key to it, I, I don't. I don't do. Extractions. I haven't had to. I haven't, I fillings. Haven't. I do Caps. fillings. I do fillings. Crown replacements. <laughs> I, re I repair bridges. <laughs> I <laughs> specifically, I don't do so. Don't ask, Stacey. I don't do implants. Oh. I don't do root canal. Do you canal. drill? I do have a drill. I use. You yeah. have to, to to do a filling. You've got to drill it out first. Don't exactly. You? Yeah. Do you yeah. use local anaesthetic? Yeah. No. No need. No <gasps> need. No need. Why? Because it's not true. <laughs> <laughs> the situation in my mouth is I have one very long piece of teeth, that white bit there. That's yeah. all one piece, yeah? What? <laughs> one tooth. <two. laughs> <laughs> one, one piece. Well, it but it made to look like many teeth. <laughs> oh, it is. So it, that's <laughs> false teeth. <laughs> yes. OK. Either end of this, uh, I have two what you call crowns, yeah? Mm. Right at the end. At the bottom, I have my own teeth here. As my dentist says, my bottom ones are Papa Don Colour, yeah? 
and my top ones are pilau rice. <laughs> <laughs> so who said that? My dentist. So this was some time ago? No, no, no. I pro no, no. David, years. I do, I perform my own dentistry. Yes. There's no exclusivity there. You still have a, a dentist, yes. but you just don't, you don't let him do all the stuff. Yes. Why is your mouth in such a state? <laughs> <laughs> because I used to. I used to have 17 sugars in a cup of oh. coffee or tea. 17? 17. 17, yes. 17 in a mug? Yes. If I had 18, it's too sweet for me. <laughs> The crowns would come off. I'd go to the dentist, yeah? He charged me three, four hundred quid, yeah? To put them back in. And it's, it's outrageous. And I heard this magic word. I heard him say to his dental nurse, Fuji 9. <laughs> yeah? Fuji 9. And I became aware that this Fuji 9, it's actually a looting cement. Huh? Which means you can use it... Are you sure he wasn't halfway through a Japanese football resort? <laughs> <laughs> you can actually use it... It mixed one to one the liquid and the powder. It's a cement, yeah. Mix two part <laughs> liquid, yeah. yeah. Then it becomes more malleable for fillings. I found a way via my TV work to get hold of some Fuji Nine. <laughs> Once you have Fuji Nine, <laughs> Why could you, you are a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> so so, what, what equipment do you have then? All I have is my Fuji Nine <laughs> with, its, with its little orange spoon, with a bigger end and a littler end. <laughs> so there's different amounts, depending on whether you want the 50-50 like, or the 2 to 1. Like That's Fuji 9. Yeah. It's all done for you. It's done for you. It's magic. Uh, it's magic. And then, but it's magic. It's, magic. it's like, you're, the cement is softer than your teeth, yeah? So I have a, um, a leather maker's drill, yeah? Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> leather maker's drill? A lot, yes, a leather yeah. maker's drill, because that has um, sanding fitments to yeah. grind it down. You've got to check your bite after you've fixed... After you fix the crown, if you get it a bit wonky, your bite won't be right. So you have to file the Fuji down. Oh, that bite's nice now. That's <laughs> nice. OK, but... but the other thing you've got to check after your own, doing your own dentistry is your mental health. <laughs> <laughs> Do you not need one of those special lights? Kitchen Island. I've got a Kitchen Island. It's, <laughs> nice, to, it's nice to have a Kitchen Island, isn't it? Yeah. And it has a big... It's the only place with a big light over it. <laughs> so I got... My son has a PlayStation seat that's very low back, like that. <laughs> so I put, PlayStation seat? Yeah, it's a gamer seat. And yeah. I put that on the Kitchen Island. island. On, on the Kitchen Island. You put it on yeah. the island? Yeah. So you're up high <laughs> on the island? Yes, because well, then that puts the lamp about there. And so, so you're the... <laughs> You're in a PlayStation gamer seat. Yes. Balancing on what's the surface of the kitchen island? Uh, do you know? I think it's Corian. It's very nice. <laughs> Corian was originally what was used for autopsy surfaces. Again, so. Are you doing your own <laughs> autopsies at home as well? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what to say? Oh, the dog's dead. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> so, if I was to say this, the hardest <laughs> thing is there's somewhere to hold the mirror. Yeah? I think the hardest thing is but to sell I... the story, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> The most curved Indian instrument, called a samashi or something. And if I put it next to me on my gaming thing, the curve of it, it's a, like a flute thing, the curve of it goes there, <laughs> and I can put my mirror there like that. Got the light there, game thing. <laughs> I, I... <laughs> Sorry, you, you hang the mirror on the, on the end of a curvaceous Indian, Indian musical instrument. instrument. Yes. <laughs> but this is very specific. Mm. So what's it going to be? There's a, I mean, there's a lot of detail. Yeah. <laughs> if he was trying to make this story plausible, why would he say the way I set up the mirror is that I tie it to the end so, of an Indian musical instrument? Do you, rem do you remember Bob being on the show before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and it's always true. <laughs> it's true about the, the masks in Castle Douglas. It was true about him being able to tear an apple apart with his bare hands. <laughs> It's true about the game in the gardens. Well, look, whether or not it's true, and, and we don't know yet, uh, don't try it at home. I, I, I <laughs> do you ever do extractions, Bob? I've never done an extraction. Because I genuinely had an extraction yesterday, look. Look at that there. Ooh, they've not used Fuji. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, what's it going to be? I think it's true. You think it's what? I think it's true. <laughs> So, Bob, is it the truth or is it a lie? It is 
True. <laughs> I once set fire to my house with a box of fireworks. David Mitchell. And uh, was this on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> It was, it was done out of ignorance. <laughs> <laughs> what age were you? I was somewhere around about seven. I want to know where you grew up, where a seven-year-old can buy a box of fireworks. I bought them in the shop where, near where I lived in Middlesbrough. It was a box for two and six of standard fireworks. That was the brand. <laughs> standard brand. That sounds exciting. <laughs> standard fireworks. Yeah. A normal level of excitement will be endangered. <laughs> yeah. For a bonfire night, you will forget. <laughs> <laughs> but it says standard, but yeah. then it's... Do you well, know that is standard for a firework. Yeah. <laughs> so you're in your home. Yeah, and no, you're seven or eight years old. I'm seven and I'm on my own, yeah. On your okay. own. Yeah, and what it was late, what, on one of the fireworks, I think it was the sparkers, it said, not suitable for indoor use. Mm -hmm. Which at that age makes you think, ah, that ah. means they're okay. Could you just not read the word not when you were being. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think not was the brand? <laughs> <laughs> you go, oh, lovely. I, I love that not brand food. It's not for human consumption. <laughs> I know that logic that says, well, people have obviously tried them indoors. Oh, I've they're discovered just... they're not suitable. Yeah. <laughs> so therefore, I won't use them indoors because I want to live. <laughs> if you look at a big firework, it won't say not suitable for indoors. It's so it's obvious. Yeah. Right. But well, on the sparklers, everybody. they chose to put it on. So what happened? I lit the sparkler. The, the sparks went into the box of fireworks, a standard box, <gasps> and set them off. And I carried the box of fireworks are now beginning to light into the kitchen and I threw them into the kitchen. <laughs> I thought it would be more suitable. <laughs> I think you're right. The kitchen of all the rooms is the most suitable for fireworks, <laughs> isn't it? it because is. of the oven, the gas, the it's... stove, there is fire naturally in the kitchen. Yeah, there's a lot of... and there's more... it's more wiped down... Yes. yes. ...less cloth. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened then? They went off in the, um, What kitchen. was the sound like? Was it bing, whee! <laughs> no, these were only standard. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, can't remember, I remember, as I'm sat here now, um, wiping the scorch marks off the floor and thinking that my mum's going to kill me. Yeah. And so I'm going to be in big trouble. Then I went back into the living room, unbeknownst I... to me, yeah. I dropped one. <gasps> and it was, the living room was completely engulfed in oh. flames. It sounds to me that if you're on your own at home at seven, your mum's pretty laid back anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but she said, son, will you sit here and look after these fireworks? <laughs> <laughs> Whilst I out to the bingo! <laughs> so, you lit the sparkler. A spark went into the standard box. Yes. The box starts to go, you go, uh-oh, I must get them into the most suitable room for fireworks. <laughs> yes. The kitchen. No need to go beyond the kitchen to the outdoors. Yeah. <laughs> Mum said don't go out. <laughs> it's, good to know, it's good to know there was at least one oh. rule in your house. <laughs> <laughs> what time of day did all this happen? This happened mid-afternoon. Oh, dear, so you didn't really get the benefit of it. Who got the fire out? I went to next door where Miss Best lived. She was about, bless her, she was about 80. And I knocked on their door and said, my house is on fire. And she said, do you know, I thought it was. <laughs> 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 so what happened then? She called the fire brigade. They fired their water hoses throughout the house. Yes. Ruining it. Even the rooms Ru where there's not no ruining, fire. Not, yeah. not ruining it. Yeah. You do know that before they put out fires, it's already ruined, don't you? Lee. You're making this house all wet. It was lovely and warm. Lee. Oh. And it's the water damage yeah. that knackers the yes. house. Which, Is it? Not yeah. the fire? Not the fire. <laughs> if they would use their boots to put it out. <laughs> Honestly, the yeah. entire house, that's it. I was, in a, I was in a family of four children, and we, had, we were homeless. Where, where... <laughs> well, keep it light. No, I'm just saying. Where were all the other kids while you were alone with the fire? Why did you take three? They were looking after fireworks you? in other people's houses. <laughs> 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 so when you say you were homeless, how much of the house did the inferno claim? It's gone. Entire it's house what, the gone. Whole, house whole house gone. Yeah. The whole house burnt down. Burnt down. So how much did you leave in the living room? 
The fireworks in the kitchen have only caused a few scorches. Yeah. What did you leave in the living room? And now, and now, don't you feel stupid for saying standard fireworks? Yeah. I tell Not you, they really. Well, I think you were stupid. <laughs> they like a sparkler indoors. <laughs> if you don't know what you dropped yeah. in the living room, is there a chance that it's just a coincidence? No, it could be. That it might not have been your fault. <laughs> That's what I said to the press. It's not your fault. <laughs> press? Who, what, what press? Who, who, who did you speak to? Local press. Because they, they came to the house while it was burning? Yeah, you know, they're, they're hats on, trilbies, <laughs> slipping around. <laughs> <laughs> With those little bits of paper in the, <laughs> in the, in the notebook. Uh, yeah. Were well, they called things like Scoop McLean? <laughs> <laughs> I believe it was called Ron Waffle. <laughs> Sorry, Ron so, Waffle. It was either him or the other ace reporter on the Gazette was John Caramel. It was one of them two. <laughs> Caramel and Waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <I> mean, <laughs> the question is whether you think Bob has been telling the truth. Well, I, was, I thought it seemed very plausible until we heard about <laughs> Caramel and Waffle. <laughs> I think he thinks he's telling the truth, but I think what's happened at some point, he's seen a film <laughs> in which this has happened. He saw backdrop. And he's now convinced <laughs> that it happened to him. I think it's a lie. Sarah. I, oh, I sort of... I was going to say I want it to be true, but that sounds really horrible. <laughs> and I think... I don't I think it might be true. Well, I think it's true. I think it's true. So you're going to go for true? Yeah. OK, Bob, were you telling the truth or were you telling... A lie. I was telling the truth. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>